All right, so in this lesson, we're going to be discussing intervals and specifically intervals of increasing and decreasing and where the function is positive or negative. Because here's a little background. As we know, uh, when we have a graph, a function is a representation of, okay, we input certain numbers, okay, which typically means we plug in a number for x, and we evaluate the problem, and then we get a certain number. Or we get an output, or we find out what f of x is or what y is. So essentially, remember that knowledge of domain and range that you thought, oh man, when are we ever going to use this? This would be a good time to kind of realize it. So we input, well, I mean, we put in a domain, and then we get an output, meaning we get a range for the answer. So uh, in this worksheet, we're going to be talking about interval notation, so I'll kind of do an uh, example question, and then I'll do a couple more uh, rapid fire in another video. All right, so uh, the first thing it says, write the intercepts as ordered pairs. Okay, so we're looking at number one. There's an intercept at negative three and positive three, and an intercept down at negative three here. So these, obviously the ones right here, negative three and positive three are x-intercepts, okay, which are at negative three, zero, and three, zero. And then down here we have a y-intercept at zero, negative three. X and Y intercepts there, not too bad. All right, now we need to decide where the intervals of increasing and decreasing, okay? And so when it talks about interval, it wants to know from which X value to what X value is my graph increasing or decreasing. And the way we do this is with interval notation, okay? So I'll do a little note here next to that step. So interval notation looks sort of like this, okay? So... It has a bracket, has parentheses, has some numbers. Let's explain what these mean. So the n first number talks about where, where the interval starts. So starting at negative 3 okay, and ending at 5. So from this number to this number, okay, what, if it's increasing, decreasing, whatever it happens to be. All right. So now let's talk about the bracket. The bracket means I can include negative 3 in my interval, meaning including negative 3 to whatever number, okay, and the parenthesis means non-inclusive or non-include, okay, which means uh, that would be a number in which my graph, when I'm graphing this, would either have a hole or some type of gap or maybe an asymptote, uh, and that's, those are with problems uh, that have denominators or maybe you have a, 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 a square root, something like that, a positive root. So anyway, that is interval notation, okay? And so in this problem, where does the graph increase and decrease? Well, it's increasing, okay, I'll highlight it here. Uh, number one, the graph is increasing right here. It's increasing on this, okay? So we want to know where the graph starts to increase, okay? So the graph starts to increase at zero, right here. Now again, I'm, whenever we talk about the interval, it's increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, it's always in reference to the domain or the x. So I know, well wait, it starts going up at negative three. Well that's the y value. Remember the x value is right here in the middle at zero. So that means it's increasing starting at zero, okay, and then as it continues to go up, it actually will never stop, right, because there's an arrow at the end of the graph, and it's going to keep going up, 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 and will it stop? No, it won't. So it's going to keep going up forever and ever and ever, and in math, we just say infinity, okay? All right, and now, at zero, can I include zero? Again, in this problem, it's in absolute values. There's no denominator or asymptotes or uh, undefined that we need to worry about. So yes, I could include zero, so I'll put a bracket around it. And then for infinity, again, infinity is not really a number. It's just like, okay, we know the pattern it's going to continue. So I can't put a cap on infinity. So I put a parenthesis around it. All right, now let's talk about decreasing. So where does the graph start to go down? Okay, well, again, on, I'm doing it in yellow here. This yellow part is the decreasing part of this function, okay? But where does it start? Where does it start to decrease? 
Well, I would have to go off the graph all the way to negative infinity, right? Because at negative infinity, we don't know what number that is, but that's where it starts to go down. So negative infinity, all the way up until zero. And again, we're, t oh, we're talking about the domain number, not the range number, because I, oh, but it goes all the way down to the negative three. That's the range, the y value. We want the x value. It stops going down. And the x value it stops going down at is zero. Okay, we put a parenthesis on negative infinity because we can't ever put a cap on infinity. But we can include zero, so we'll just say zero. So it starts going down at zero. All right, so there we go. That is increasing and decreasing. That's part B. Part C, the vertex, uh, just the point of where it switches from increasing, decreasing. So that is right here at zero, negative three. All right. All right, now let's talk about positive and negative. Okay, so... I'm going to change the highlighter color here for us. All right. So where it starts positive and negative, so using the x-axis, so which I'll highlight here in purple, where does the graph, uh, is the graph above the x-axis, and where is the graph below the x-axis, right? Because above the x-axis is positive, and below the x-axis, it's negative. So we want to know where is the graph positive and where is the graph negative. So I'll just call this P and N here. So P for positive, N for negative. All right, so the graph is positive or above the x-axis, okay, and these little parts right here, so right there and right there, I just drew that, drew that in purple, okay? So that part is positive, meaning it starts at negative infinity, okay? And, and again, whenever we write the interval, it's always in relation to the domain or the x-axis. And it stops being positive at negative 3. So starting at negative infinity, it stops being positive at negative 3. Again, we can never include infinity. And negative 3, let's think about that for a second. So when the graph gets to 0, is 0 a positive or negative number? It's neither. It's neither positive or negative. So I can't include negative 3 in the positive part of this graph. So I put another parenthesis. Okay? So be careful of that. So you can't include negative 3 this time because 0 isn't positive or negative. All right, and now let's do the negative side. Oh, excuse me. Is there another positive in this graph? Yes. So it ends at negative 3. But then this picture shows us that starting back up at 3, it's positive again, and then it will stay positive all the way to infinity. And again, I can't include 3 because at 3 it's 0, and 0 is not positive or negative. So there's two different spots where this graph is positive. And what we do is, rather than uh, just writing two separate things, we have to put a U in between them, meaning union. So from negative infinity to negative 3, also from 3 to positive infinity. So those are the two places where my graph is positive. All right, now let's do the negative. Okay, so this graph begins to be negative. Here, I'll do this in orange, okay? So it begins to be negative right there and right there. That's the negative part of my graph, okay? And so it starts being negative. Where does it get below the x-axis? It starts at negative 3, and then it stays negative all the way to positive 3. And like we talked about, I can include, I cannot include them because that's where it's 0, and 0 is either positive or negative. So we say it goes from negative 3 to positive 3, the graph is in the negative part. All right, and then does the graph point up or down? Again, if you look at the arrows, look at the arrows I drew. See how they're both pointing upwards? That means the graph is pointing up. But another way I like to think about, especially with absolute value, and this works for absolute value or parabolas, is the graph open up or down? Because that will be the same thing. So this graph also opens up or points up, so we can write up right there. All right, so that was kind of a crash course review of all those things that they're looking for here. The most important part is that you know how to properly do interval notation, and then obviously to know the concepts of increasing, decreasing, and positive and negative. So uh, this is just kind of a, a, a longer video. I'm going to do a couple other problems in another video, so make sure you look out for that.